So nowadays, more and more services are hosted in the cloud. Think about renting a bare metal machine or perform some serverless computing. So that's why there are multiple tenants. The providers try to isolate them using some language level isolation and some sort of virtualization. So if resources are shared, of course, we need to consider side channel attacks in both soft and hardware. So what is more and more in interesting for these kind of attacks is to have them in a remote setup because the network throughput is also increasing. So they're not only attacks possible in lab environments because that's why I'm here. We're gonna show attacks from a more real world scenario from a more real world setup. Okay, so where were attackers in previous side channel attacks? So this is maybe a an attacker in a co-located machine or an attacker mounting some malicious JavaScript on a certain website. But the case for memory deduplication, which has not been shown at the moment, was is there a way to attack something in a local network or in an internet network scenario? So memory deduplication was re-enabled on both Windows and Linux and is enabled by default on certain Ubuntu servers, for instance. So it is widely used in in the cloud, we contacted some cloud providers and they confirmed that memory deduplication is used in practice. Um, furthermore, there have been attacks shown, like Rohem attacks or attacks from JavaScript, but they were all in a, uh, from one security domain attacking another one using the side channel via a shared environment. But we were asking ourselves, are there attacks that can be performed on the same security domain because with active mitigations cannot prevent them. So what is memory deduplication and how would someone exploit that? So consider these two processes, process A and B, and we have something mapped into the physical memory that is resident in the RAM. And now the attacker would try to guess the content, in this case the blue page, and there is a kernel thread running, scanning over all of these pages, and if an identical one is found, then the physical frame number is replaced and they now point under a copy on write semantics to the same physical page. So what happens now if the attacker starts a timer and performs a write operation? There is this optimization called copy on write, which first copy the contents and then overwrites the stuff. So of course the attacker would now try to measure the timing difference and observe a huge timing difference of one microsecond between a write which was on a copy on write page and uh, only like a few nanoseconds for a page which was not run under the copy on write semantics. So how would we map this whole thing now to a remote setup? So the idea here is to have a public API which allows it to store and replace data. So the attacker would first send some data, there is some in-memory cache, like for instance memcached or some web request pool running. The service would fill this page, the OS again deduplicates the stuff, attacker tries to force an update request and then um, measures again the round trip time. And once this write is performed, depending on whether the guess was correct or not, we see a significant timing difference for a page being under the copy and write semantics or not. In our paper, and you can see the details in the papers, we used a remote server being like 14 hops away, meaning there was quite a lot of noise on this network. Um, we used KVM with default settings on the Ubuntu VM and an Nginx running some PHP, memcached, and MySQL server installed. And to capture the web request, we were using the PyShark framework, which is closely like a Python wrapper for the PCAP uh, interface. In our paper, we state like three challenges. The first one is how can we like overcome the network's noise? So how can we amplify the, uh, the latencies? In the second challenge, we were trying to, is it possible to trigger those copy on write uh, page faults using an API? Is such a scenario given and meaningful? And in the third one, as there have been attacks shown from previous work where you have control and enable byte by byte leakage, can we find such a target that allows us to shift byte by byte and enable uh, leakage from that in a remote scenario. 
And for the first ta task, you see if an attacker would be able to mount a, a binary large up, uh, a file and upload it to uh, the in-memory cache. So this is quite reasonable. Sites like WordPress run memcached, for instance. And uh, the attacker tries then to use the, uh, the override and use multiple pages. The latency can be significantly amplified from one microsecond up to an arbitrary amount of microseconds. Timing difference for the one case and the other one. So for challenge two, we were thinking about an interface which provides a file upload. Data is cached somewhere in the RAM. And the attacker would then have a, an, another API call allowing our web call to override and update or release data. And this, with that case, we can uh, solve the challenge too, which allows us to trigger page faults remotely. And how can we like, already use this uh, setup to perform some kind of attacks or at least fingerprinting? So we use this in the paper to um, fingerprint the libc version. We used uh, memcached being run in a, uh, yeah, next to the PHP and Nginx setup to store and replace data. And there was another challenge. We did not know the page alignment, so the attacker would have to guess all the different page offsets within to find the correct one, but can use, of course, the uh, memory deduplication channel, uh, ch uh, channel to remotely find out uh, where the, the, what the correct offset is. And there is a second challenge with memcached. There is a race with other users, since we have to have a, a use after free scenario where the attacker first insert something into a memcached slab, and then the attacker has to release it. And there is this small race window where the attacker tries to reallocate a slab with the same size. So that's also a challenge, and we, we elaborated on that one in the paper. But it's still reasonable that the attacker could repeat the stuff and um, use that to override the, uh, the copy and write page faults and see the timing difference. So here you see in the figure there is a significant timing difference with only 40 requests over the 40 hops, which shows that an amplified timing with an amplification factor of 16 pages leads to this clear timing difference for the correct uh, libc uh, version and the incorrect ones. Um, what else can we do with that? We can remotely break KSLR, as you might imagine. This, uh, there is not a high entropy on our kernel pages, it's just two to the power of nine. So um, the idea is now to find pages from kernel images which only have a single pointer pointing to the text set, sec, uh, kernel text. And then basically the same idea, use all these offsets, these 512 fonts, use a similar scenario as before, being able to upload stuff, waiting for the deduplication, and then triggering page faults to determine the correct one. So you see to the left, I don't have a laser pointer, unfortunately, but clearly that the correct offset is, um, is, has a significant higher timing difference than the other 511 ones. OK, so for the third challenge, we were looking at InnoDB, which is an in-memory cache for MySQL and MariaDB. And there is an optimization. When you insert into such a record uh, index page, uh, this can fail on an insert or update. And if that fails, a reorganization optimization comes into play, which reorders certain uh, records. And this allows us, as we will see later, that we can byte by byte shift uh, uh, victims data into attacker-controlled attacker data. And again, in this scenario, we use uh, memcached for amplification and to leak InnoDB records. So how does an InnoDB record look like? We assume such a scenario where the attacker controls the red parts, so RAX and RAT. One is used to trigger reorganization, the other one is used to change the alignment of the victims record data, RT. Um, so how would this look like in a reorganization state? So the attacker changes the sizes of these two records and then shifts the, um, then the reorganization happens and it shifts like the first byte of RT into the 4095 control, attacker controlled um, uh, data region and the attacker would now perform again this guessing but the attacker would have only 
I have uh, 256 possibilities instead of like multiple ones to get the correct offset of the, the co-located uh, targets record. And the attacker afterwards would trigger another resizing, which leads to another reorganization and it, to get back into the next state where the attacker tries to leak byte number two, the attacker would change back the um, location of the records and switch between reorganize, reorganized state and the reset state. So on a high level basis, this would, would look like that. The attacker changed the target alignment, guesses the bytes, uh, secret bytes in parallel, uses amplification to make it uh, uh, visible over the network, wait for the deduplication time, update the pages, and byte by byte leaks the data from an InnoDB uh, index page. So how would you mitigate such a problem? The first one is there is an opt-in on Windows which disables memory deduplication for process. There is also a scientific work by uh, USEC and they apply basically same behavior for each of the memory writes, so you cannot distinguish between copy and write pages and non one. Um, they also proposed to only deduplicate zero pages, which also brings a significant performance overhead. And of course, as you might assume, if you like do this in a weird and, and, and like really uh, suspicious way, um, I, I think also DDoS, uh, DDoS protections and packet inspection stuff would be able to detect these kind of attacks. Um, there's also a proposal to encode pages um, with different salts, but this is on a cross-process level, so if you would apply that to a process level, this might be also quite costly. So here you see um, the KSLR break, but with the Fusion patch enabled, and you see you cannot uh, d differentiate between the correct guess anymore. You see it's like um, offset, I think, 78, and it leads into the, the red section, and you see for all, like with the enabled patch, you cannot differentiate the two distributions again. So concluding this talk, um, we showed that memory deduplication uh, is also possible under a remote scenario. We showed how to fingerprint libraries remotely. We also showed that using HTTP2, um, it is possible to break KSLR over this um, set up in less than four minutes across the internet. Um, we leak database records using this reorganization attacks, this uh, exploitation technique, and in between, after we published that work and disclosed it to Red Hat and other vendors, um, we were working on a new mitigation, uh, which is probabilistic and will, come, uh, will be merged into the Linux kernel soon. That's it from my side, so thank you very much from, for your attention, and I'm open for questions.